traders what's going on jamie setley here it is uh the 22nd of august 2018 and i see kelly says happy hump day my friend happy hump day to you too kelly and um as is our regular start to this let me know that you can hear me let me know that you can see the chart it should be a dxy weekly and once I have confirmation of that, we will get started. It's all good, says Thomas and Peter. Great. Okay. Super. Um, so it was one week ago when we had the top last Wednesday in the dollar uh, and euro bottom at 1301 um, right on the spot. Uh, and we were able to get long and then got out here early, but that's okay. We'll be navigating the short-term stuff to get back in here. Um Here's what I think is interesting. So you got to remember, this is the weekly of GXY, right? So essentially, starting here, that was the last week in May, okay? And starting right there was when um, I kind of thought we were going to top, right? So, I mean, it was, you know, it's never easy, right? Uh, I, I was, that's when sentiment started getting kind of extreme. And then we went into this crazy, like, false breakout after false breakout after false breakout after false breakout um i guess on a weekly basis you could say they weren't really breakouts because you did fail intra week but we kept taking out the highs from november october of last year and then um we kept failing so it seemed like we were going to finally turn and then we got this right um well now this is is the false breakout so you know i point this out just because it's funny like we started here in late may thinking that we were on the road to maybe rolling over in the dollar and then finally the dollar breaks out to the upside and comes back and we actually are at the same place we started in late may right um so we are at a little bit of a spot here i think this kind of drives home that yeah we have returned to essentially uh, ground zero for what, you know, back when we were thinking that the dollar was going to try to roll over. Um, so yeah, we do have, I think a little bit of, of support here for maybe, you know, some pause, some bounce in the dollar, some consolidation, what have you. Um, Ty says, what tells you that this is a false breakout? Well, because the market broke out and it has retraced the entire breakout, right? So this is a breakout week. Last week, you had kind of a spinning top on the weekly chart. And then this week, we've erased the entire uh, so-called breakout move. So that would be, that's your definition right there of a false breakout, okay? Um, breakout did not hold, and we've retraced the entire thing, right? Ty says, testing the breakout area is common, isn't it? Well, yes, but this, the breakout, has already happened right and it has been retraced 100 percent retraced so you have re testing the breakout area is one thing that would be to me testing up here right 95.50 we've broken that whole thing so that to me is is we've erased it okay so that would be a false breakout to me it's how i it's my interpretation of this chart right here all right so I just want to drive that home. I uh, don't have anything else really to, to add to this. Um, what I did want to add something new that I haven't really shown in a while. So we uh, look at the dollar Swedish Krona as, as many do um, that have been in this business for a long time. We uh, pay attention to the, um, you know, the dollar Swedish Krona because a lot of times it, it can be, you know, it's kind of your canary in the coal mine, as they say, right? Um, when the uh, dollar sec turns, right, you want to pay attention to it uh, because sometimes it, a lot of times it can be a pretty good indication of general dollar direction. I'm not going to go into the reasons why, because frankly, I don't even know. Um, but we've talked about this a lot and we've seen it happen, you know, just quickly, you know, the turn back in December 2016 was two weeks before the turn, uh, the turn back in um you know february was a little bit before the turn uh two weeks before the turn actually uh and as it is now we've turned here on uh, august 15th last week uh same as the dollar so they are kind of in line right now it wasn't an early indicator by any means but i do like the fact that it has turned right and it's turned to the level that 
uh, is consistent with um, you know this chart like it's not like a random level that we turned at we didn't turn at just a random spot right we turned at the parallel which is uh, uh you know parallel to to this april 2015 uh august 2015 line which clearly was a major major spot okay so that to me is a good sign uh dollar sec turning all right moving on to us dollar The channel pinpointed our top up here. We did not get any sort of a bounce here. That's all right. Uh, we were basically out of Euro at this point. Um, we are seeing some bounce here now, all right? This is the four hour average uh, or four hour average. It's the 200 hour or 200 period average, excuse me, on a four hour chart. And you've got the trend line a hair below there. So, you know, we've got Fed minutes today. Um, not sure how big of an event it is. I know a lot of people are looking forward to it because of, you know, the Trump Powell saga and everything. But, you know, these minutes are from, you know, this is from the last meeting. So some of the things that may have been said after that is not going to be reflected here. Um, so a lot of people may be thinking that, you know, Powell speaking at Jackson Hole on Friday might be actually a little more market moving than say the minutes today. Either way, you need to know when the minutes are there today, okay? So, you know, a lot of times coming into an event, um, you have Ty asking, do you think the dollar will fail to lower slope? Well, I don't know, but I'm saying this is here, so I'll get going on that. Um, a lot of times you will come into, you know, an event like this or like Jackson Hole on Friday, and after you've had a move like this, right kind of a, a pretty strong straight more or less one you know one-way move a lot of times you'll get maybe a pause there um maybe some near-term capitulation or something um with, with with the dollar or any any asset for that matter okay um you know i'm thinking like for example recent examples pretty good like grains right you had uh grain reports supposedly bullish but grains rallied into that report and then failed after the report came out okay um, something like that could happen here with the dollar. So, you know, we're on a support zone from the average. You do have some horizontal stuff here. Look at all these highs and lows back to June 21st, um, including the high back here on the 28th and then down to these lows. So it would be nice. These are the August, early August uh, lows. You get August 3rd, right? August 7th and August 8th and August 9th. And if we can kind of maybe sweep those out a little bit, you might get, you know, the impetus for um, some short term capitulation. Um, in other words, you know, kind of a, a short term low. OK, um, that's where my head's at on that. And keep that in mind as we look through the rest of the dollar uh, pairs here. OK, so we will go now to euro. And. You probably already know what I'm thinking here. Um, you know, we are the big zone or the big area is going to be the 1670s. OK, 1670s is really the area where I'd actually consider like a really short term, um, you know, a short. OK, here, because that is a clean slope line. And let's be honest, we've kind of traded between these slope lines all year long. Right. OK. Uh, you can count five up. Right. Not to say you can't have a quick spike higher at the same time. We are in a, an area uh, very close to an area. August 8th high is 1628. And that's been a pretty good little pivot, um, you know, short term pivot, basically going back to June. So, you know, this I'm talking analysis wise. Right. I don't see a trade here for me. Not right now. OK. For me, I'm either like, you know, going to fade 1675 potentially um or i'm you know i'm kind of in the camp of buying weakness at this point right you've got to think back to um what we know we know that we had a drastic reversal off of extreme sentiment last wednesday off of a very 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 clean level uh let's not forget just the beauty of this uh longer term chart here too right 
Remember this chart from last week? We talked about the trend line all the way back channel from 2000, 2001. And we talked about essentially this being a breakout and us testing the neckline. So on a very uh, broad scale, you know, you've tested the neckline, uh, which is this blue line, which is, you know, this is a weekly chart. We're looking at the line from the August 2015 and May 2016 highs. And we got the presidential election spike high here at 1299. And we tested it and we've rocketed higher. OK, so. We know that we've turned up from a huge level. So what we want to do is we want to navigate the short term stuff and we want to find out where we want to get back into this uh, trade on the long side on euro. And again, I think it's probably going to be close to these, you know, 115 handle. Um, that is, uh, of course, the low from from June. OK, and then, you know, more or less the low from May as well. So you've got a 115 handle. You've got consolidation down there uh, in Elliott. You would call this the former, you know, fourth wave. Right. And if you were to draw yourself a nice little uh, line off of here, this you might end up identifying kind of your, your bullish slope for the upside, at least for the near term. OK, so um, that's where my head's at in terms of euro uh, and potentially getting some support to buy or a dip to buy. Now, again, I don't know if that's going to be today. Uh, for all I know, we scream higher up into 1670s and fail and come back maybe bottom around Jackson Hole or something like that, right? But I think we can all agree that on a very short-term basis, you do have, and you can count, a five-wave move to the upside, right? You got a one, two, right? Three, within three, you've got one, two, three, four, five. You got a four and a five, right? If we throw up, uh, this is very textbook. If we throw up a, a, you know, an RSI on the hourly chart, what's the, what do the textbooks say, right? Your strongest momentum is going to be in wave three of three. That certainly is the case here, is it not? Highest RSI, 86 on the hourly chart. That is three of three. One, two, one, two, three of three, four, five of three, four, five. So you could, again, extend up to the 1670s. In fact, if we were to do where you would have... Um, wave five equal wave one you get 1662 right good enough for government work close enough to 1675 so um you know i suggest really paying attention to 1675 you might get uh, a failure off there for a pullback and you know it could be a decent size pullback as well so um you know i'm kind of observing at this point on euro uh, but those are the really the levels for me at which I would probably want to do something, right? 16.75 and close to 115. Okay, so we will move on now. Um, let's look at the British pound. Okay, cable. Um, I still like euro on the upside better. In cable, I think we talked about this last week. Uh, it was just that, you know, you've got, to me, you've got euro pound just kind of in an uptrend, right? Um, it's it'd rather go with the strong at this point, and you know, this is true, of course, on not just a daily chart, but it's a weekly chart as well. I mean, we've been making higher highs, higher highs, higher higher highs on higher lows ever since 2015. And look, if we look at the drop from September of 2017, um, this doesn't really look like a big trend change to me. It looks like you have simply a kind of a wedge and you broke out of it. You know, it's slow as molasses, it's Euro pound. What do you expect? Uh, but, you know, it's a breakout. And dips here are going to be bought. Certainly, there'll be times when the pound will be stronger than the euro. But going kind of with a broader uh, trend assessment here, I do believe that um, euro will, in the end, be the better trade on the long side. OK. So with that said, what do we think of where pound is going to fail? It's very much like um, euro in the sense that You know, we're I 
I don't have us at like a really big level here where I'd actually want to do anything on the short side. Um, the big level is probably 130.30s, right? And that's this low here from June 28th. But if you really, or the 29th, but if you look back, right, look over to your left back to last year, you've got much more important stuff over there, right? So those are your lows from October and early November. So that's a big area. And then if we look at the slope here, you've got a slope line up there as well. So, you know, again, if we were to, um, you know, scream higher for the next couple of days or the next day, I should say, um, in cable, I think you'd be looking at 130, uh, you know, 35, 130, 40 or so as a level to actually potentially fade for a quick short. OK, um, at the same time. Where do we want to be buying or looking for support? Well, this is back. We haven't had one of these in a while, but this is our, remember the slingshot setup, right? Where you draw your original kind of channel. In this case, that would be right here, right? And it comes back and it, sli it breaks to the top side, comes back, slingshots, to the upside that was yesterday morning okay now a lot of times this will happen multiple times so if you get the chance if we pull back at some point before getting to this level then that's where you would want to be looking for support and you've got a, a really good just obvious horizontal level there as well to pay attention to okay so you can see the little congestion there. That was the European high yesterday. And then um, this was the um, kind of the US early US session, or not early, because that was early, but this was the European close, right? Yesterday, right here. So 128.47 is going to be a level to watch for support over the next day or so. Um, and then you might get the chance to take it all the way up to 130 uh 35 or so so you know this is a great reward to risk uh proposition if you can get down into 128.50 uh i'd be a buyer i'd be stopped out at 128.10 you're risking you know 40 pips um in order to make you know close to 200 right that's a pretty good reward to risk scenario right and it's not based on um you know any sort of crazy uh dream here this is pretty realistic so Cable, good setup here. Um, I do like Euro again, better on the upside, um, kind of bigger picture due to the Euro, pen, Euro pound trend. But this is a setup, a setup's a setup. That's all you can ask for, okay? All right, so that will be one that you'll want to pay attention to. Again, mark those levels down, 28.50 and 30.35. Okay. Um, kind of on the other side of the ledger in terms of like where, you know, where would you be willing to um, actually take the other side of this dollar uh, move, at least for the, you know, for a short term move, right? I Look, I think that, and I've been pretty adamant about this, and some might say that I've been stubborn about it, but um, I've been pretty adamant that, you know, this, the dollar is going to turn and it's going to be a bigger turn, right? It's going to be a more important turn. Um, I think we've made a really big turn of the dollar, particularly against Europe. But, you know, what places are there to potentially put, you know, buy the dollar for a, a little tactical bounce? Well, I still think it's Aussie. I've talked about that um, the last couple of days. I originally was thinking 7310. Um, again, they'll need to be need to be exceptionally, um, you know, um, picky. I should say when you're trying to fade a move like this, right? Because um, it's we've gone into you know an exceptionally weak potentially dollar move where this is the third move in the cycle for that started in 2017. So you know you don't want to be having your analysis right and then you know end up losing money trying to fade your own you know kind of macro view. Um, but again, at the same time, I'll say like with pound setup is a setup here. So you know. 20-day, 50-day average. 50-day average has been pretty good. 
Um, I, you know, if you're going to get a setback in something like Aussie, which look has been the weaker link. I mean, Aussie is actually down today, right? We'll talk about that with, with, uh, as a, you know, compares to the New Zealand dollar. Um, but you know, this line here, again, if we squeak out a little bit more, maybe you get the 7385 area or something, um, 7390 for some resistance. Uh, and then I'd be looking to potentially fade that. Uh, if we look at it over here on this, on trading view, you can see you know, you can make the case you, you need one more shot to the upside, you know, to finish five up. Right, three of three, four, five. So three of five, wave four. One more shot gets you 73.90 or so. Okay. Um, now, looking ahead, uh, insofar as as supports concerned, right? I would be looking at this 200 uh, hour average. Okay. You can see that it lines up pretty well with what I call our original new uptrend slope. Um, you know, and a big level at 72.80. Okay, so if I were, you know, let's say if I put out a short later in Aussie up here, up at 73.85, 73.90, I'm probably not going to go for 72.80. I'll probably end up going for more like 73.15 or 73.20 because I do think you'll get something there anyway. Uh, but this would be an area where I'd have it marked for, you know, a buy the dip type of type of uh, type of trade. Okay. It actually would not be if we get 7390, it'd be pretty close to the 618 anyway. So that's where I'm thinking. Um, you are on resistance in Aussie, um, you know, as indicated by price action. The dollar's been weak, and Aussie's actually uh, even weaker. So um, you know, places to you know play this more immediately. I think Aussie, and of course, dollar CAD, which we talked about yesterday. Uh, this was the setup. I still have that order in, right? Just missed it by a couple of pips this morning on, I guess you had a CAD release, um, but that 130 figure, okay? Like to see that kind of hold for, a, you know, a little bit of a bounce. You know, I like this trade, even though it's counter trend here because, um, and against kind of my so-called bias or whatever for dollar weakness. Uh, but look, you can buy it here with just a super tight stop, I don't think that you're gonna come down here, right, and then go higher. You're gonna stop here and go higher, or you're just gonna break, okay? And if we break, fine, uh, and then we'll look to enter a short position, you know, probably on the underside of the median line if we were to do that. So, you know, I've got a couple scenarios in my head uh, where if things go awry and we get stopped out of, you know, for, for a small loss in dollar cat, I'd be looking to short it on the, uh, you know, on the underside of, of the break. but as it is now, I would just be looking for, um, you know, a bounce back up into this 3090, 3110 area. Okay. And give yourself a little one, two, and then try to short up here. So the dollar CAD levels are pretty clean, um, you know, here in the, in the near term. But this would certainly be a, a big break. Okay. So I do think it happens eventually. Um, you know, maybe we go into a more normal, so-called normal macro period where like, you know, oil actually goes up and the Canadian dollar actually goes up and they happen together. Uh, we haven't really had that in a while. Um, you know, crew came down and tested that 200 day average last week and um, it's come up, come up pretty good off that average. So, um, you know, you could be in the next like higher in crew. Getting to the New Zealand dollar. So Kiwi is actually one where got a level up here. Um, you know, we're more or less on it, right? Old lows, 67, 17, 25. You got the 200 um, average on the four hour chart. You got this trend line here back to June. Um, all very, very clean. I do not wish to short the New Zealand dollar, however. Uh, remember, 
in one of the posts, I think it was a week ago, we talked about Aussie Kiwi, right? Aussie Kiwi failed at this trend line from 2011, 2012. So the thinking here is that, you know, look, if you're gonna fade this dollar move, again, might as well do it against your weaker counterpart. Um, and in this case, that's Aussie. So, um, you know, I think that's the case until at least, you know, 108.50 or so, that's gonna be the 200 day average in this trend line. And from there we'll see, but again, failing at such a big spot, on the weekly, you do have to kind of respect the potential that, you know, you do go lower. So uh, 108.50 is going to be a spot for for Aussie Kiwi, at which point, you know, you really maybe don't care as much about whether you're playing Aussie or Kiwi. Um, but as it stands now, that level still, you know, 120 points lower in Aussie Kiwi. So might as well play Aussie on the short side and look to be more of a buyer on dips in Kiwi, right? Level I'd be looking at for uh, Kiwi dollar support is 66.40. That's two things, okay? It's the week open and and it is the high volume level, a very high volume level from last week, okay? So 66.40. Um, and now I can get really nerdy on my slope stuff here too. So Ty says, what time do I post? Um, well after the it's typically anywhere between um you know f four and and six pm like you know eastern time uh usually around eh, usually around five pm eastern time frankly it's usually when it goes up um anyway so ignore everything on here except for the slope lines okay this is from the february march trend line we're going to talk about the concept of symmetry again. We've done this a lot. Um, so what we have here are you've got your upper parallel, which is your trend line. You've got your lower parallel, which is your zero line, right? Or hundred line, excuse me. That's support, support, support. Okay. In gray, you have the 25 line and the 75 line. Notice that here recently. We're actually failing, at least right now, before we get to this line. We might be going into what I kind of call contracting, uh, contracting channel. So what might happen is that you end up trading on, so this line, which is between the 25 and the median line, that's also this line here, which is the equidistant from here, is also going to be 6640 or so. So, you know, we're going into kind of like a tighter range potentially right where like you have a big move a big uptrend off of the low and then you kind of go into a contracting period of range and the you know the levels that might do that is basically now in 6640 okay um so if you pull back to 6640 you do have kind of some some slope stuff there uh but more importantly the horizontal level of 6640 is going to be the weak open and a volume level so i have that marked as a level at which i want to be a buyer Okay, moving on to dollar yen. Breaking to the top side here. So uh, last night uh, we had a short, uh, came into 110, and we were thinking that maybe we'd get an ABC move. Look, this could be a much bigger low. Um, I think the if you get two legs up here, you're talking 110.76. The more important level is the trend line, of course, and that's going to be actually closer to 111 at this point, 110.95 to be specific. And look, we had a whatever I think about the dollar, um, it may be that you're actually going into a period of weakening yen as well. Okay. Um, you can't ignore the fact that we did find support on the lower parallel. Okay. So, you know, that is a fact. I mean, that's not 
up for debate. That happened. So, um, you know, we'll pay attention as we get up into up into this region here. You might have a little pause actually more or less now at 110.65 or so. Um, but if we get up into one, you know, 10.95, 111, I'll be thinking resistance at that point. But if we turn down from there, great. Okay, maybe look to short, things line up. But if we blow through this, you kind of have to uh, consider the fact that maybe this was a much bigger low than 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 we think, right? I mean, you saw the chart yesterday um, in in the uh, swing update, and we did have we did have a here we go. We did have a J spike, right? Now, not all of these end up being um, big turns, but some do, right? So it's something to pay attention to. I mean, it's hit the low for the year here and the high for the year, almost, because that was actually the high for the year over here on, uh, early in, in January, but get the idea. So do not hesitate to change your opinion. I won't hesitate to change my opinion, excuse me, um, if we do get up through this 111 area, which you can tell also is 20 day, 50 day, uh, just horizontal stuff up here. So, you know, if the evidence starts to change uh, with respect to dollar yen, then, you know, we'll change too. But uh, the better place to be will probably actually be, in my opinion, would probably be um, some yen crosses, like not necessarily dollar yen, but you might want to, you might want to actually look at, you know, Kiwi yen or, uh, Euro yen, which I think would probably be the two best to look at. All right. I see Mahai saying he entered late. No worries, my friend. Uh, he says, if you haven't talked about the indices and you have time, please do. I will certainly. We will look at them here in just a moment. Um, I want to take a look first at um, gold and silver. And then actually, I, I did have the two indices that I wanted to talk about are actually the Nikkei and the Dow, okay? Um, so let's look at gold and silver first. Okay. So to me, gold bottomed, okay? That's simple. Gold bottomed. We identified this a couple weeks ago, um, the magenta line, again, to draw it on your chart. It is linear. Um, it's not um, It's not log scale. So it's linear. And what I would do is draw off the uh, October 2008 and uh, December 2015 lows. But what, get, what gets interesting, right? is I notice once you extend that to the left, you can see that you cross a million different pivots, not a million, but you get what I'm saying. So like all this important action back here in 2005 and 2006, um, all this important action back here in 2003. So when we zoom into this, very much like the dollar, that which should not be any sort of a surprise. Um, you do have what I think can be, you know, maybe a five waves up. Um, you know, I'd like us to, I'd like to see us extend a little bit higher, like closer to the 12, uh, 12.05 on this. Again, this is the CFD, so the numbers are going to be a little bit different than the front month futures right now. Um, but you know, you can see 12.05, 12.07. Uh, you got the 1618 up there. Don't even, we don't even really need it. Uh, but all these old lows over here. So former support, got a trend line here, a line, I should say, off of the uh, July and August uh, highs. And if we could get, um, actually not August high, but August uh, 10th high. So if we could get up into here, right, it'd be a perfect spot for a little bit of failure. It's frankly quite similar as um, what I'm thinking or have been thinking with the dollar Right. It's like, do we bounce a little bit here or do we have another stab at, uh, you know, at the lows here, maybe on the minutes or something. Right. So if you were you were to get that, your big opportunity here 
uh, in my opinion, will be buying, you know, the dip, right? Much like Euro. Um, it will be looking for a pullback, okay? A corrective pullback, preferably in a nice little three wave uh, move. Um, and the support I'll be looking for is really like this long-term trend line, maybe as low as 1181. 1181 is a big volume level. So, you know, that was, um, you know, that's a point at which you don't really want to go below, frankly. Um, otherwise, it kind of start to think that something else is going on. But, you know, 1181 to 1185 on this chart, again, this is the CFD, so it's XAUUSD. Uh, so those, that range, along with about 1205, 1206, is going to be kind of, uh, you know, to me, trading levels for, uh, gold. All right. What about silver? So silver has not been acting nearly as um, as good as gold has. Uh, but the way I'm approaching it has not changed. Right. Won't go through all of the long term uh, stuff again because we've done it a lot. But it's essentially the pivot here. So you have a perfect channel, right, from here. It's a beautiful channel. Uh, we should trade up through here and, or bounce off of here. As long as you're holding this channel, your silver is, you know, in a kind of a, a, a opportune spot to, to rally. Um, near term, it just doesn't look all that great. Doesn't look like gold. Um, I guess from an Elliott perspective, you could be going into a flat, like A, three waves up B, and then get a C wave down. Um, if that were to happen, then you'd get a lower, you know, kind of, or sorry, a higher low somewhere around here. Uh, I would be more focused on gold at this point. It's just a much cleaner looking chart. So you might as well follow what's uh, what's clean rather than forcing, you know, kind of an opinion on something that might not be there. Um, but for for silver, you're looking at basically 15 bucks, okay, as a spot to you know um, to pay attention to because that that's your really long term channel and you know it's very much like. Or could be like, I should say, you know, the 2008 period, okay, um, 2008 and then early 2009, like we were below it, we came up, you know, we put in this consolidation for a couple months where we basically were banging up against this line, right, and that line had been support before, okay, once we broke above it a meaningful amount, right, a credible amount, once we broke above it, that line was more or less support again. So I will be watching for the same dynamic. Now let's keep this in mind. This is a period that took many months to unfold. All right. This is not happening in a day. At least I don't think so. Um, you know, you got to build a base, right? It's not often where you're going to get maybe a big V bottom here. So I would keep all of that in mind, okay? If we can get up through, you know, the 15 area and preferably a good amount higher, get back within this channel, maybe even up to the median line at 1570s, then pull back, then you'd be looking at support at some point, you know, in weeks or months from now, whatever. So um, I'm observing here, um, don't have any actionable idea at the moment in silver. I do think it's putting in a low and bottoming, but that's not a setup. Right, gold is more of a setup at this point. All right, okay. Let's rock on to Nikkei and Dow, and then of course I will take a look at the S&P and the Nasdaq. Um, I'll start with the Nikkei. So look, the Nikkei doesn't look that bad here, um, really. Like. We've been consolidating since May, and you know it's not the most textbook like continuation head and shoulders because it's you know you'd like to have a little a really to have a really strong um, 
you know, a really strong, uh, you know, kind of structure. You'd like to have a little higher right shoulder, right? You can see this is lower over here than this, but the pattern's there in that you have a low, a low, and a low, and a neckline, right? So, you know, there you go. So there's your, there's your, there's your neckline. Your open right there is 22.708, by the way. Um, we're right on the 200-day average. Uh, we have pushed above it. We have pushed above, you know, a pretty well-defined horizontal, you know, kind of region. Um, you know, if you put some horizontal lines here, right? You can see this region here. Um, not a whole lot of room for air if you're trying to break out of of, of this of this level in Nikkei. And not to mention, you just have a trend line that we hit March, July, and then three weeks on it, or sorry, three days on it, it's a daily chart, three days on it, and we are now popping above 200 day average and what I consider resistance and a very well-defined level at that. So there is certainly the possibility that the Nikkei surprises a lot of people and shoots up out of here. Um, you know, I don't, know when there's BOJ coming up. Uh, I will say, and this is kind of in a while, this is not for two months, but you know, BOJ has a tendency to shock people at, um, you know, shock people in, in, in October, right? Their October meeting, historically, when they've done some really crazy stuff, they've done it in October and like in an April. So I don't know. I kind of thinking ahead there um pretty far ahead but whatever you get the idea so yes ty says real power bars on the daily last two outside and ups yeah absolutely so uh you've got a big outside up here and today we've kind of followed through we had the weaken weakness last night you know right after the close on you know the trump headline thing uh whatever um and price action says that it really doesn't matter a whole lot at this point so you know, uh, this fits, by the way, with kind of what we talked about with the Nikkei. Like we hit a big support yesterday. Uh, maybe the Nikkei is actually a bit more bullish than we think. Um, you know, dollar yen is maybe a bit more bullish than we think. Yen crosses might be a bit more bullish than we think. I mean, that's just kind of all there is to it. Um, I don't see a lot of people talking about the potential for dollar yen to resume a rally. Remember, we were looking for two legs down in dollar yen for a long time. Um, you know, we never got it, but we hit 109.77 yesterday, 200-day average, and we hit, you know, the um, the uh, the lower parallel. I mean, what else do you want, right? It's a big spot. So, yeah, as, as it pertains to the Nikkei, you certainly can make an argument based on macro that you know there's potential here to head higher, right? Um, and I'll leave it at that. But yeah, your real breakout level, of course, is going to be up here, like 23,000. Uh, but, you know, it's there. Pay attention to it. If we, you know, go intraday on this, you know, I would view any weakness over like the next, you know, the next, um, you know, day or two. If you come back into this, 22.4, I'd look at it as an opportunity to buy it. I don't know if you're going to get that opportunity, but that's what I'd look at. And I'd go stops just under here. 22.3. So there's that. All right. So Nikkei doesn't look bad. Um, here's the Dow. I tweeted this out on public Twitter this morning. I thought it was interesting. So 2009 low, 2011, 2011, you have what we, you know, what we call the, the big shift, the shift fork, right? Um, and this is really the structure that's dominated since that point. Okay. And the parallels within it, you know, 2013 through 2015, for the most part, you traded between this parallel, this magenta one up here and, um, you know, the one, two parallels down while well, we're doing the same exact thing this year for the most part, right? Um, since the lows back in April, We've traded for the most part between these parallels. Okay. So 
you know, I just I did want to just kind of point that out. If you're going to be, or at least for me, if I'm going to be bullish on an index, it's going to be not U.S. It's just not. All right. It's going to be like maybe Japan. Like I just we just went over the Nikkei, even like China. OK, here is this is FXI. Right. FXI came off of a huge level. We had 4070 marked down. We spent a day below it, closed at 4060. Since then, we've gone through the roof. Um, you know, this to me is going to have a better reward to risk than, say, the U.S. OK, this is the Shanghai composite right here. All right. This is FXI. You can see FXI rallying in a clearly kind of impulsive manner. Um, and I'd be looking for, you know, any weakness to buy at this point, 4220 would be a spot. That said, I'm here for you. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, look, simply won't, um, won't head, 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 head lower. I mean, it's really a fight. Like, so Mahai's here, I know, and he's been asking, you know, on Twitter, like yesterday, you know, what do you think about short here? What do you think? You know, um, look, it's just such, it's just such a fight. I mean, you know, sometimes you just got to give up the fight for a little bit. Um, and <laughs> that's all I can say. You know, it's sometimes you just got to give it up. It doesn't mean, like, well, let's be honest here, like bulls and bears probably have been fairly frustrated obviously bears have been frustrated but bulls probably have been too i mean you know look we get up here 7500 market tanks right almost new highs market comes off you know even yesterday um you know you have a headline come out market erases all the gains for the day so you know it's not like um there is you know this clear-cut one-way run like we had in january or something so look for nasdaq for me i just don't have like a very strong um opinion on this like it, counting from down here from april you got one two three four five right i guess you could make the argument that you're trying to extend or something like maybe this is a one two of five i i don't know um i will say that i just don't have a strong a strong opinion on this at the moment i just don't now look i will say that if you do we are in a relatively uh weak seasonal period you know, and that 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 goes through basically most of September. So, you know, if we drop into, you know, September or something, see this old high in the NASDAQ? That's the March high, 71.87, right? Look, that was support, not just here on July, but also back here uh, on July 30th. Okay, we came right off of that. That's a sign of a pretty strong market, right? So, you know, I wouldn't be like, necessarily trying to fight this on the short side just yet, like just yet okay now i will say 76 73 is the top of this channel that would be a level at which you might get a trade off of it right here you really are in the middle of nowhere in the nasdaq so you know 76 73 is the top of the channel um you know the again the the march high which was support you know twice in july and that's going to be on this median line okay if we just forget about everything except for this beautiful channel, um, you know, you kind of get the idea that maybe we should just stick to the channels and, you know, pull, you know, buy pullback support or something uh, to 2180s. If you break that, then you've got to you've got to change. You got to change your behavior, right? Look, I know a lot of times it is awfully tempting and you know sexy or whatever to try to catch the top. I get it, um, but I'm also reminded of, I'm looking for the drawing tool in here and I can't find it. What's wrong with me? Oh, here you go. But it's also, you know, like, like, like news anchor, like a, you know, or a news reporter, it's better to be right than be first, right? And at this point, I just don't see like, where we've the evidence to be total you know to go just like rogue bearish at this point i just don't see it nasdaq is not confirming highs i get it um 
Mahai, totally, man. I get it. He says, I'm not looking to catch the top of the sexy. I want to catch because it it's profitable. And to you're right, man. Like, especially when it comes to like an options trade, right? If you're just going outright puts, like by definition, catching a top is probably going to be the best time to buy it because volatility is usually the lowest. So, you know, your options are going to be the cheapest based on that too. Um, and I'll tell you when I see some. At this point, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. So, you know, at this point, look at the channels, 7670s, 7180s. That's where I'm at on NASDAQ, okay? Um, S&P. Actually, let's go to a different chart in the S&P. I think I've got something better here. Uh, S&P. Okay, here we go. Hold on. All right. A couple things. So this is a really, really, really even longer term parallel thing. It's kind of a mess. I get it. It's off the 74 low and that 1982 low. Okay. The parallel that crossed through essentially 20, uh, 2007, that's going to be higher. It's basically like 3,000, right? A little above 3,000, you know? So maybe pullbacks until then are kind of worth like buying or just, you know, be a bull, I guess, until you get to that point. Also, your FIB extension levels, hold on. All right, FIB extension levels. Okay, so great financial crisis, what have you, global financial crisis. Uh, that drop from 2007, right, to 2009. If you take and do the extensions on that, okay, 1618, was resistance in 2015, like perfect. The 2618, which is the next one, is 30, 37 and a half. I mean, seems kind of reasonable, right, that we get there. So I'm kind of down with that. Yeah, so Mahai saying you think we go there first. Look, I can make a pretty compelling argument that that is what's going to happen, right? Um, you know, like near term, some consolidation, like a little bit of a fight would not be much of a surprise to me. But like, I'm not trying to short it here for that because one, it's you're really going against the grain at this point. Like the market's had its chance to like come off. Right. I mean, we've essentially been up here since July since for a month. Right. You put in this little spinning top first week in August. OK, you dropped, took out uh, that low. I was looking for us to take out a little bit more than that. Maybe get twenty seven forty. Not going to happen. I mean, this market is just an endless bid. It's strong as hell. OK, um, combine that with what we see on, say, stuff like, you know, yen crosses and, and the Nikkei. And it's not hard for me to imagine that you get a move up into the 30, you know, north 3000. Right. OK, so I will leave it there. Um, on the S&P. I do want to show you one last thing because I actually, I think this is uh, key. Hold on. All right, hold on. So this, again, my, my focus right now is going to be on the Nikkei though. I think that's where the opportunity is. Um, I want to show you something super interesting. So you know how, uh, what we have, the, the 1 trillion Apple reaching $1 trillion. One trillion market cap. So you know it did happen before, right? Um, PetroChina. Okay, here we go. So it did happen. Um, 
you were looking at daily, no, weekly charts now. Okay. So it did happen. Um, and it happened back in 2007. So first, here's PetroChina. Okay, PetroChina reached a trillion, like somewhere over here, blew out crazy for two weeks, went up 120%, you know, over the course of basically, um, you know, three months, and then it crashed, right? That was it. That was the October 2007 high. That was it right there, okay? So what I've done is I overlaid PetroChina with Apple. And didn't do any screwing around, like no, you know, um, messing up with the, you know, the whole um, contracting time series. I literally just copied it and pasted it on top of it. And it looks pretty interesting, right? Um, not really from here, but it kind of starts in February of 2016, where it starts to look like similar okay so starts to get really close now so remember this is where PetroChina went up 120 percent into the top um if we go 120 percent into a top again i'm not saying this is going to happen um it would be great if i could predict the future i don't know anyone that can but it makes for super interesting discussion uh, and look, if it continues to follow, you'd be stupid not to follow it, not to pay attention. So what this is saying is that we could kind of be in the tail end of a blow off. Okay. Uh, and if we are, we've got maybe like three more weeks left, uh, and 120% from the low in Apple would be $400 in Apple stock. So Apple would become the first $2 trillion company. All right. I don't know. I think it's interesting. I think it's worth paying attention to. Like, you know, we all know that there's a bunch of speculative excess out there. Um, we all know, you know, we've seen the big macro, you know, indicators and, and the sentiment indicators, which actually are frankly kind of mixed. Um, but a lot of these things end with a big bang somewhere. And like, this could be our big bang. Like they, they say, you don't ring a bell at the top. Well, this might be where they ring a bell, right? This might be our bell ringing. This Apple going absolutely stupid on the upside. Uh, I'm going to follow this as long as it's working and, you know, see kind of uh, how it ends up, really. So if Apple goes stupid on the upside for three weeks or four weeks or whatever, I think that'll probably be our sign. All right. Until then, it's, uh, I guess, business as usual. Okay. So um, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. Uh, we covered a lot. And um, <laughs> yes, well, hi, absolutely. We covered a lot. And we've got, you know, some great opportunities over the next, not just couple of days, but a couple of weeks. And um, Ty, thank you. Think, uh, says, thanks again. Great work. Thank you uh, for your time. Thank you all for your time. I know it's an hour out of your day to sit here and listen to me go on. Uh, but obviously, I appreciate um, you guys, you know, participating here and, and, and hopefully you get something out of it. All right. So I will have this archived ASAP and um, I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.